Good afternoon. And welcome to St. Anne's, and a special welcome to all those who are visiting us today. We are pleased that you have chosen to celebrate this special liturgy with us today. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. The Mass intention is for Robert Fagan. At this time, please turn off your cell phones and listen to our call to worship. At this special liturgy, today we say goodbye to Father Tom, and we pray for God's blessings on him as he travels his new path in life. Today's gospel from Luke takes place on the road to Emmaus. <coughs> After the events of Good Friday and rumors of Jesus' resurrection, the disciples were sad, shaken, and in disbelief. They had no idea that they would encounter Jesus again, especially on a dirt road headed away from Jerusalem. As we entered the church today, we brought with us all that we are and all that has taken place in, on our own Emmaus Road. We brought our joys and fears, our hurts and happiness, and our brokenness. And just like the disciples, whether we realize it or not, we are seeking an encounter with Jesus, which we will receive through the, this Eucharistic celebration. We simply come as imperfect children seeking to receive our Savior who gave all that he had for us. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, like the disciples on the road that day, we ask for you to prepare and enliven our hearts to receive your word and your body and blood. Give us hearts that are on fire with gratitude for all that you have given us and been for us from the moment of our first breath until today. Guide our worship as we thank the Father for the incredible gift of his Son. Although we, your children, are imperfect, <coughs> We know you always desire communion with us and forgive us. May the sacrament of love fill us with love that only you can give in the breaking of the bread. And as we say goodbye to Father Tom, with a little sadness in our hearts, it's not really goodbye, for we believe that we will continue to be in communion with him in every breaking of the bread. Amen. Let us stand and greet each other. Here. 
here I am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. Amen. We continue our celebration of Easter today by hearing stories from the early church, how they encountered the risen Christ. Where do we find him? Our search is no different from our early Christian brothers and sisters. When they broke bread together in the Eucharist, they realized Jesus was there. So let us pause now, call to mind our own uh, sinfulness that we might be more worthy to celebrate this Holy Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you encounter all who search for you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you open the eyes of those blinded by despair. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are real and present in the breaking of the bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. May your people exalt forever, O oh God, and renew joy, youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has been exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with the joy of your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw, foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Show us the path of life. 
second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, then conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looked downcast. One of them, named Cloopus, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death, death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from the, our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted, interpreted them that it referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, 
He gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was at with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us when he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what they had taken place on the way and how it was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon. I want to welcome you all this afternoon as we're celebrating this liturgy. I want to welcome Father Todd. I'd like to welcome uh, Tom's uh, brothers, uh, Pat and Kevin, and Kevin's wife, Louise, and his nephew, Michael. Uh, you make <laughs> and a very close friend of the family, Sam, but nice to have you with us. Great. I'd just like to mention that uh, when I met uh, Pat last night in the kitchen, we took care of business immediately. We talked about the Red Sox and the Celtics. And, and <laughs> And uh, we're going to send our position paper in, so. <laughs> Today we, we have a beautiful day to celebrate this liturgy. And, and uh, the past couple of weeks we've had some nice weather and some not so nice weather. And uh, I had uh, been doing some errands, errands uh, uh, this week, and I was driving down Johnson Ferry uh, Road. I saw a number of people who were walking, jogging, uh, people who were doing it alone, people who were doing it with a twosome, there were threesomes, there were moms with their babies in their carriages, walking, and their children, and, and strolling, and getting uh, exercise, and discussing things, and talking about what's happening in their lives. And, and uh, as you drive down Azalea Drive there, uh, you see that along the river quite a bit. So it's uh, part of our, our makeup to, to walk and, and to share and, and discuss and dreams and hopes and, and sometimes to lament what's been happening in our lives. When we can experience this ourselves, we can get a feel, a real feel of what was going through the minds and hearts of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Weren't they walking? Weren't they sharing what had happened? Weren't they saddened? Weren't they lamenting? Were they questioning everything that was happening? Someone whom they had put their hopes and dreams in that was going to take care of them in Israel. All those dreams are shattered. And all of a sudden, somebody joins them. They're walking along. And he asks a simple question. What are you discussing? What a lead-in, huh? 
They told him the story of their lives and what's happening, and he just continued to take it all in, and then he explained everything. He explained the scriptures. He explained the meaning. He explained the prophets. And then they went into that house because it was getting late, and, uh, you know, stay for, have a meal with us. It's too late. And, and they sit down, and, and he takes that bread, and he breaks it. And their eyes were open. What an incredible moment. They saw. They saw the reality of what this person Jesus is. And they said it. Our hearts were burning when he explained it. And they, instead of going on to Emmaus, they turned around and went back to Jerusalem. And as they entered that room where the other 11 were, and those other members of their small community were just waiting and wondering, they came in and they said, we have seen him. And the community confirmed it. We have seen the Lord too. What a beautiful story. But more than a story, it is the reality of knowing that there is a destination. And sometimes it's not the destination that we think it is. Along this road, there is that sense of encountering and trying to understand the meaning of a new relationship. This day, as we as a community are preparing to break bread with Father Todd, we start to recognize a man who has been walking along the way. It is Father Todd. I am not going to call it the road to Emmaus, but rather I'm going to call it the La Salette Way. Because the La Salette way is very, very important to him and, and to me and to all the La Salettes. Because it's a road that we travel. It is a story about a beautiful lady and two children. She calls them, she beckons them to come near, and she wishes to give them some great news absolutely wonderful news and she has to tell it. As we look back, you know, and, and telling about the, the time that Father Tom went in the seminary, we say, oh boy, wasn't he young to go in the seminary? What is he? You know, first year of high school. Wow. He hadn't experienced any part of life. However, the beautiful lady invited him and she invited him through others. She invited him to listen to her message, and he did. This, my friends, is the La Salette way. It is a story so beautiful. It is internalized through the years. It is a story which is read and reread that it becomes the fabric of one's life with the ultimate call to make this story, to make this message known. <clears throat> this coming September, it will be 60 years that Father Tom and I met. He from Enfield, Connecticut, I from East Boston, Massachusetts. We both entered 85 New Park Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut, the La Salette Preparatory Seminary. He was a freshman, I was a sophomore. Through the various years and the various houses and uh, the houses of study that we attended, because 
so our goal to be ordained and we were and the various assignments we've had the most important thing was to keep this message and make it known Father Tom and I would catch up every so often as we walked out on our La Salette way. We would catch up on our families, our mutual acquaintances, our religious brothers, our assignments, our reflections, and our recreations. Yes, can you imagine that he and I played basketball? <laughs> Can you imagine that we tore up the tennis courts? <laughs> oh, if only. I think those days are gone. I mean, are gone. <laughs> Father Tom arrived here in St. Anne's 14 years ago. There was always a bit of apprehension in entering a new assignment, but he jumped into it heart and soul in his ministry, in his friendship, and in his outgoing spirit, he developed his love for the St. Ann community. And this is how Father Tom was continuing his last way. And in this way, he made a mark. And this mark, I don't think, will leave too soon. He made a mark because he used the God-given gifts that God had given to him, and he used them well. The conviction of the gospel, the sharing of the good news on the journey of life of all the individuals that make up this community. The good news for many to know and to realize that it can be theirs. That is the gift. How many times did he do this? I don't know, in this age of statistics, it's very, very difficult to keep count. 14 years. How does one count being a Lord's instrument in helping folks to recognize his presence? The openness to see the world and to help people realize that through the community that his presence is confirmed. Doesn't that sound like the gospel today? He is truly risen. This is building community. This is community because it is all about the risen one. Tom, your memory, your memories of St. Anne are, are, are really many, but we can break them down. We can break them down into the sacraments. How many baptisms have you done here? A couple. Thank you. <laughs> Those are easy to remember. Stop and think of that. Stop and think of the number of marriages. Um, how many times have you been an instrument in affording to folks the forgiveness of God? How many have you fed at the Lord's table? I'm not sure that we really want to know a number, but I'm really sure that we want to realize that it is in these moments, these sacramental moments, these moments of breaking the bread or raising a hand in absolution, a time of pouring water, that our faith makes us see that he is risen. What a beautiful gift to have done this to this community. 
And as we have seen over the years, these past 14 years, how the ministries evolved here at St. Anne's. It's incredible. Talking to Jim the other day, we were talking, we were kind of confused. Is it 75 or 80? You know, yeah. Kind of interesting. It doesn't make any difference. The number doesn't make any difference. What makes a difference is how well our elderly are taken care of. How well the broken are healed. How the underprivileged are recognized. How the marginalized find a place. To look at the poor, because we look at the poor, we see the face of Jesus. To follow the La Salette, the way, to bring Mary's message, to her great news, that everyone can be reconciled. To the youth of St. Anne's, look at the programs that we have been established. Starting from our young folks, our middle school, our teens. Father Tom has a great place in his heart to see the growth of our young people. And we can see by the response that is given what has been accomplished. It is the story, the story of offering the gift that God has given and to place it in the context of a message that is so beautiful that it is irresistible. When I was here with you the first time, the, the parish was, or the church building was going under renovation. And uh, we see the end results, a beautiful place of worship, you know, and the grounds, how nice they are taken care of. It is certainly beautiful and it welcoming, but it's a structure. The building is not the church. It is the living stones, the living stones, the hearts of people, you, my brothers and sisters, who make up this church. It is you who build the body of Christ. And Father Tom has striven to do this in his own ministry here. You yourselves know where you are, and in your own hearts, you know how you've been touched. Along the road, along the road is the journey that we take, and Father Tom took the Lasselet way. And it's interesting where he got involved in a, a motto a slogan, and it is changing lives. The opportunity to be effective, to change lives, to change hearts by telling the story, by having the insight into the scriptures, by breaking the bread, by realizing that he is risen in this community makes all the difference in the world. What is beautiful about this changing lives, I think we can put in another word, and it's called reconciliation. And for the La Salette way, the charism is reconciliation. to allow people to recognize that they can be one with God because God loved them first. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that important for all of us? 
And so, as I'm not used to reading from the papers, as I messed them all up, I think that was intentional. With all these thoughts in mind, Tom, I, I, I'm simply going to say that um, I will miss you. I, you know, you won't be there to watch Jeopardy with me anymore. I always beat you. I'm giving this talk. <laughs> <laughs> and I have written here, I will miss giving the answer before you. <laughs> <laughs> I will miss our lively political debates. Yeah. But I still have Father Roger. I will miss the laughter and jokes in the situations we get into. I will miss the sharing concerning our lost led brothers and their ministries and their journey on the lost led way. I will miss the friendship which opens our hearts and minds and our eyes to shed tears about what is important to us concerning family and friends. I would like to quote Father Roger as applying as he applies it to himself, and, and I take it on myself. I'm just starting a new career, and I have been invigorated by this parish and this pastor. Same man, changing lives. So, where you go, you will continue to be enlivened by the scriptures. You will continue to break bread and you will continue to be part of a community in the Houston Archdiocese, but namely in Friendswood. You will continue to make the presence of the Lord really real. And so, I don't usually do this, but I'm usually I'm ending this, or quasi ending this, with an Irish blessing. <laughs> May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. They say never to take off and come back for a second lane and when you're giving it a homily or a talk. But I'm going to do this, you know. I just want to say, you know, that man, that, that person, as a young man who was abducted, he was a Roman, uh, of Roman descent, and he was abducted and brought into slavery. Uh, his name was Patrick. You know, and if he had stayed in Italy, he would have said this to you. <laughs> Agori e per cent'anni. That's it. And uh, to conclude again, <laughs> I have this letter that was sent. Okay? 
Dear Father Tom, I am unable to attend this wonderful tribute to your years of faithful service to St. Anne's Parish, but I do not wish to be absent from it. On behalf of the provincial administration, and I believe of our entire North American province of the missionaries of Our Lady of La Salette, let me assure you that we are all share in the pride of this moment. United as we are in our La Salette way of life and ministry, your labors have been our labors, your achievement our achievements. Thank you for bringing your personal and powerful expression of the La Salette message of reconciliation to the people of St. Anne's. In Ecclesiastes, we read, for everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Father Tom Riley's season comes to a close, but the time of St. Anne's Parish continues. I am confident that the people of St. Anne's, your people, will take Father Ray into their hearts and do all they can to help him become the next great and beloved pastor of St. Anne's. May God bless you always, in all ways, and in all your ways. Father Rene J. Butler, Provincial Superior of Our Lady of La Congratulations. Sit down just for a second. <laughs> I want to thank Father Joe. He brought back many memories. <clears throat> when he talked about basketball, I always enjoyed it when he tried to out rebound me. <laughs> and that was when I was on my knees. <laughs> so, so, as I have at St. Anne's, so I have a lost sled. Many very fond memories. So let us stand. I believe in one God. Christ is real and risen indeed. Let us pray for a world that needs his presence and companionship. The response is, bread of life, hear our prayer. For the church, 
May we recognize Christ's presence in every Eucharistic celebration. We pray. Amen. Amen. For Christians who are deprived of celebrating the Eucharist, especially where there is war, poverty, or lack of pastoral leaders, we pray. For immigrants, as they make their way to new places and new lands, may they experience Christ in the welcome that they receive. We pray. For those newly baptized into the church and all of those who will celebrate their first communion during this Easter season, we pray. For those among us who are depressed, despondent, we're in mourning, that they may recognize Christ in each of us as we reach out to them in compassion. We pray. For the blessing of our pastor, Father Tom, and the leadership that he has provided, may his journeys be safe and blessed. We pray. For those who are ill and need the healing power of the Holy Spirit, we pray especially for Cindy Azar, Lori Kalta, Philip Ross, Baby Liam Somali, Lois Wells. We pray. For the eternal glory of our beloved dead in the presence of our risen Lord, especially Joel Foyer, brother in law of Chris Era, Jane Griffin mother of John Griffin, James Marshawn, uncle of Sarah Murphy, Eric Mocha, brother of Theodore Mocha, James and Joe Pratt, Boy Scouts of St. Anne's Troop 1776, Alonzo Rigg, father of Adriana Curry, Alonzo Rigg, Aneth Fry, Alonzo Rigg, and Alejandro Rigg. Philip Walsh, Walsh, brother-in-law of Beth Grimshaw. Philip Hopt, brother of Jim Hopt, uncle of Jessica, Kevin, and Carrie Hopt. And for Richard Campbell, friend of Father Tom, we pray. For all of those who have been laid to rest in our columbarium, and for all those who mourn the passing of someone they love and hold dear, we pray. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. And for Robert Fagan, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray. God of abundance, we are grateful for this Eucharistic feast. Make us worthy participants in every celebration of the breaking of the bread and open our hearts to Christ's ongoing presence among us. We pray through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. At all times we'll claim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously. When Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
Please, dealer, be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton Daniel, our Archbishop, Louise, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of La Salette, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Anne, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, inform the divine teaching, we dare to sing. Lord, we pray from every evil, 
and gracefully grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace to grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. In the body and blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life.
What makes this occasion even more special, we have a First Communion. Victoria, doll of all, where are you? Come on up. <laughs> Body of Christ. Amen. There you go. 
blood of Christ. Please stand. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptibility, incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated, please. Father Tom, we'd like to take a moment and uh, share some, some, uh, a nice video that we put together for you um, to kind of a little tribute to you and um, just to thank you for all that you've done for us for these past six years. <laughs> it's, it's been so wonderful. No, just kidding. 14 that's, years. That's how long you've worked. <laughs> see, see it, it never gets old. It's so awesome. So anyway, please take a moment and, uh, and watch this and know that it's all from the heart. Sometimes as kids you say you want to be a fireman, you want to be a policeman. I used to say I'd like to be a priest. The nice thing about being a priest is I've never had a job. Because when you minister as a priest, it's not a job, it's a ministry. It's a service to the people of God. And it's an entirely different thing. It's not commuting, it's not punching a, 
a clock, but it's being a relationship with your fellow humankind and also with God. It's been a delight for me. I remember when I first started working at St. Anne's, and in those early days, I got made fun of by Father Tom quite a bit, and I thought either two things are happening. One, I'm about to get fired, or two, he loves me a lot. And I realized very soon that the way that Father Tom expressed love to me was by making fun of me, and I realized how loved I was by him. <laughs> and in all seriousness, uh, as I enter into seminary, right as he retires, I hope someday I can be half the priest, half the man, half the pastor, he has been to me. Uh, so I look forward to the day that I can celebrate my first mass with Father Tom by my side. And so Father Tom, here is to you. <laughs> to you, one of the best men I know. Have a wonderful retirement, and we cannot wait to visit you. I've been blessed for 25 years working here at St. Anne's, but I think one of the most incredible things is having Father Tom as a boss, a mentor, as well as a friend. The generosity of his time and his guidance has just been amazing for me. Thank you, Father Tom, for being the good shepherd that I needed, and thank you for being a beautiful vessel of God's love for all of us here at St. Anne's. It has been a true blessing to be your assistant. Um, I have learned so much from you. You are one of the most kind, patient, and compassionate men ever. Um, you always, always have time for everybody. Working for you as long as I have and working beside you has just been a joy, and I will miss it every single day. Father Joe is just one of those guys that <laughs> you never forget. Father Tom is just one of those guys that you never forget. Maybe more than any other pastor I've ever known, he has given the lay people elbow room. And then he did that for 14 years. He affirmed their abilities, skills, and talents. And then he gave them the room to use those to benefit the community, the parish, and the leadership. He's maybe the only pastor I know who would have approved the El Salvador ministry. So not only does Tom assert and give room to the lay people, but in action, he also reaches out real far, knowing that St. Anne's can do it nearby and at a distance, one as effective as the other. You know, people say that the strongest bond in life is that between yourself and God and your family and your spouse. But there's one thing that's missing in that list of people, and that is the bond between friends. Father Tom, I am proud to call you my friend, and I will truly miss you. You realize we've known each other for 60 years, and we're still talking to each other? <laughs> I just want to thank you for being uh, <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> here. Uh, not only to work here as an associate, but to come back as a retired priest. That I, I'm not working more than I ever did. But I just want to say thanks, and I wish you well. And as my niece said to me, don't forget your roots as you go to Texas. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. I remember this one time after a big meeting. A lot of people were there. And I kind of, you know, spoke up, kind of said what I wanted to say, stood my ground a little bit on something, and uh, after the meeting, it was just Father Tom and me sitting there, and he looked over at me, and just kind of said, I was really disappointed in you. <laughs> True story. He was right. I'm going to miss that.
You have been a blessing in my life. You're my friend, spiritual leader, and confidant. I'm truly going to miss you. St. Anne's has been for me for the past 14 years a parish family, and you have made it so. You have made it a sense of family and community with us. So thank you for all the ministries we shared together and, and the dinners and the good times, you know, and um, be well and be happy. Amen. What am I going to miss most about Father Tom? His beautiful singing voice. <laughs> The one thing I've known from the very beginning is your compassion, your concern, your love for your parishioners, the community, and your staff. I've seen you as an example to everyone. You've been the father, not the FR period father, but the father of our community, our family of St. Anne's. You've been the father to our staff. You've encouraged the community of St. Anne's to grow in ways that we never thought we could. You've encouraged the staff to grow and, and give us expectations that we never thought we would have. And there goes the tear. You've been an example of how ministry is not a job, that when you come to work, it's not a job. I've never had a day in the last 11 years that I wake up in the morning and think, oh, I wish this was my day off. And I thank you for that. Know that your legacy that you established here at St. Anne's will go on forever. Thank you, Father Tom. You've always kept us on the mission. You know, one goal, one mission, building the kingdom of God, like the song says. And uh, St. Anne's, we wouldn't be who we are without you. I wouldn't be who I am without you. So thank you. We're going to miss you. Thank you, Father Tom. It has been a joy to learn from you, to minister with you, to laugh with you, and to experience what it looks like um, to be part of a church that is fully alive. Father Tom, I don't know if this is working or not. I would like to honor you with this statue of Father Michael J. McKivnick, founder of the Knights of Columbus, for all that you've done for the parishioners of St. Anne's and especially the Knights as our chaplain. And I think we should have a uh, plaque up here that will be uh, posted with this, and this will be on display permanently here at St. Anne's in your honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Please be seated just for a minute. Ed. You did redeem yourself in that last part. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Every time you spoke, I kept saying former music director. <laughs> Whew. 
I'll come with you to friends with this guy. Good. No, 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 no. no. Howdy, partners. <laughs> I traded my car in for a Clydesdale. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day that I'd be moving to Texas, but they said go south. They didn't know when to stop. <laughs> I want to thank you all. It's been a great 14 years. Uh, You've been you're wonderful to me. We've done a lot together. God has blessed us. I have a, the staff is really the one that sustained me. Without them, we'd probably say a mass on Riley Field. Uh, <laughs> they've done wonders. And the community here, we have so many kids. I was trying to look up in, the, in Canada Law to see if I could claim them as tax deductions. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm sure that the few, Shakespeare said the, the past is prologue of the future. So if our past has anything to say about the future, it's going to be a future alive with so many different things, so many blessings, and realizing dreams that we didn't even know we had, that, but we will have someday as long as we stay, stay open to the, the Word of God and open our hearts to one another and continue to see the Christ in one another. Now, this liturgy did, didn't just happen, so I'd like to thank all those who participated in it, planned it, put it together, the choir, everybody. I'm not going to mention names because I sure, certainly will forget somebody. So to all of you, I say a very warm and uh, sincere thank you and to all of you, I couldn't appreciate you more. God bless you. Yeah. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless each one of us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Before Amen. we conclude, just one minute, there's a reception in the old hall for those who have time. And, you know, I think there's food also, isn't there? Yes. There's food. Okay. So your invited to go over. You, you stole my part. <laughs> yeah, was... they would like you to go through the outside doors to enter Nolan Hall. So just so you know on that, all right? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Deacon. Hey, again. come on now. Wait sorry. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the Mass has ended. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks, Thanks to your God. God. Father Tom, this song is all about love and what love means to all of us and how important it is. But I think the first verse, especially the first line, just really speaks about uh, where you're going. So here we go. Sounds like this. You don't have a job. You don't pay.